Do you think you can ride a bike with a caster wheel on the back? What will happen? Will it just be fine and the caster wheel will follow as you steer? Or as you steer one way, will the caster wheel sort of just turn and flip out from under you and throw you off? Will it be to drift? All of these questions are going to get answered because today we're going to build the bike with a rear caster wheel. But if we've got a rear caster wheel, then we won't be to pedal. So we're going to need an electric front wheel. So I got one of these e-bike conversion kits, which is basically a front wheel with an electric hub in the middle. And this one is a 48 volt, 1000 kilowatt one. So it's got a controller and it's got one of these little thumbstick things for accelerating. It does have other bits and pieces as well, like the pedal assist, but I'm not going to bother using that. So yeah, it's quite terrifying actually. It's pretty pokey. There is a speed limiter, but I'm not using that. So we're just going to see how fast it goes. It's got these brake levers with wires attached and I thought they might do regenerative magnetic braking but basically they don't, they just cut the motor off so you still need a conventional brake. There is a place where it looks like you should put the disc for a disc brake but it's so close to the frame because the hub's wider I don't think the disc is going to fit without rubbing on my front forks so I'm going to need another solution. There's quite a lot of torque in this and it's quite terrifying so I definitely need a brake of some sort. So we're going to make something that looks more like a scooter so that I can stand on it and I can jump off if I need to because it's going to be pretty sketchy to ride I think. And that means that my legs aren't trapped either side of a saddle like they would be if it was just a bike. So I'm making the steering column out of 3D prints and this is the Lulzbot HS 1.2 nozzle so the part's really tough. There's lots of other parts to make but just a quick ad for my 3D printing sponsor. Thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. And all of these parts are printed in Pro PLA Plus from 3D Fuel, who sponsor lots of my other projects, so be sure to check that out as well. So here's that steering column coming. It's actually quite a big chunk of plastic, and it's got those fat extrusions, so it should be really, really tough. I've got a thrust bearing which takes load from the top really well. This was actually salvaged from another project, but originally came from Simply Bearings, who sponsored it at the time. I've got some other bearings as well, and that's going to make up the main steering column. That thrust bearing sits into a little dish so that it can be constrained. It doesn't slip sideways, but it can still rotate. In the middle of that is another collar, which is going to fit around the steering column, and the outside of that is just the right size for the other bearing that's going to hold everything in the middle. Because the main steering column is such a fat extruder, I made these black parts that basically shim the bearing so I can adjust that and get it accurate and make everything fit properly rather than reprinting the whole thing. And now we've got all the parts, those slot onto the forks. So those two pieces slot on the bottom and then the main steering column fits on and it's resting on the thrust bearing and also is constrained to the main fork upright there, the steering stem, by those other bearings that hold it in the middle. So obviously a bearing top and bottom fitted into the main steering column and neatly fitted with those collars on the stem. And the top's held on with the steering bar clamp which is clamped neatly on there as it should be basically and that looks good. So now I've got something that looks a bit like a weird unicycle so obviously that orange piece will rotate against the body of the scooter so that we can steer just like a bike. These front forks are actually much bigger than um, normal bikes, basically, with a 26-inch wheel on there. There's a good foot difference, which means it's great for standing height. It's time to make the rest of the scooter, which is going to be made out of steel. So I've got some box section here, which I'm cutting at various angles to make a piece which is going to fit under the standing platform. So we need to tap and drill some holes there so we can actually bolt that onto a wooden platform. And I'm also drilling two 20mm holes which will allow two pieces of tube to fit through which I'm actually going to bend so those go up and go onto the steering column. The board I need to make for this doesn't fit in my CNC so I'm going to just cut that by hand using a circular saw and then I'm going to round the edges off with a jigsaw.
So now I need to match the height of that board I'm going to stand on with the caster with the height of the steering column, considering that the handlebars need to lean back slightly and the wheel needs to track forward. A while ago I bought a pipe bender which is a hydraulic press and then it's got dies so you can put round pipe in and it will bend them without flattening it hopefully. My dies are a little bit too big, I've got 20mm pipe but we'll see what comes out of it. So one end goes into the steering column and the other end is going to go through that 20mm hole we drilled. So we just need to make another bend now and try and get the geometry correct. There it is all laid out. Yes, my pipe has got a bit flat on that bend, which is a bit concerning. But with the whole thing laid out, we can now weld on those two tubes into the holes that we made. I've used the orange piece to keep it parallel, and now we can add some extra pieces to stop the whole frame from twisting. Well, it looks like a bike frame. I did, however, go and reinforce those sharp bends with some extra bits of steel because I'm a bit worried about them bending and breaking, so hopefully it'll be okay. But before we finish putting that together and see if it works, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is Fanhome. Fanhome's mission is to inspire fans with high quality build up models and collections from your favourite entertainment, gaming, and pop culture brands. All of the products are original designs you won't find elsewhere. Each shipment includes fully illustrated magazines full of inspiring content and packed with information. Just choose your collection or build up model, and every month you'll receive exclusive products along with their magazine. Do you want to build the most powerful object in the universe? This unique build-up collection gives you the chance to build your very own full-scale replica Infinity Gauntlet, designed to capture every detail of the original, and this amazingly accurate replica is officially licensed by Marvel. Subscribe to get new parts each month, as well as an exclusive magazine detailing the secrets of the Infinity Saga. Find out everything you wanted to know about Thanos and the Guardians of the Galaxy, from the comics to the movies. Each issue also comes with detailed, easy to follow assembly instructions, and everything you need to build your Infinity Gauntlet, including a screwdriver. And premium subscribers will also receive the premium display base. Click the link in the video description to start your collection today. Right, we better get this funny bike together then. So I just need to reassemble that, that's a bit of a wiggle. We're just going to uh, wiggle that in there and put the whole thing together and it should all be hopefully the right height. I've used two 20mm internal diameter collar clamps there on the other end of the tube which are basically just going to stop that slipping down and give me a bit more friction against the other clamps that I've got. So everything's together. And the other clamps are printed into the plastic, so I'm just putting some bolts through here, which is going to crush that down and hold everything together. So, immediately, it looks pretty sketchy. It looks like it's going to uh, just rotate out of control. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to be able to ride it. Basically, once momentum gets hold of it and it starts spinning around, it's very difficult to stop it. So I think I really want that brake. There is a hole in the frame that looks like it's for a standard caliper brake, but I can't mount it there because the forks are too close together and there's nowhere for it to really go. So that's going to kind of have to sit in front like it normally would on a normal bike. And it's also too low for the hole, so we're going to have to make a bracket, which is basically a bit of bent metal, two holes in, that I can screw onto that mounting, which has the M6 thread the right size, and then mount the brake on the front of there. So that actually looks like it's going to work pretty good, at least good enough for our purposes. So I tried applying the brake and seeing if I could sort of ride round on that platform. And I guess you can as well as you can balance on anything, but it's basically not very easy having that caster on the back and the whole thing spinning round. So yeah, really no idea if I'm going to be able to ride this or whether the whole thing's just going to tip over or what's going to happen. Many other YouTube channels have talked about how bikes stay upright. As the bike leans in one direction, the front wheel automatically steers in that direction, so the bike will stay upright by itself. To prove this, Veritasium made a bike with locked handlebars and found that you couldn't balance on it for long. If you think you can balance on a bike with locked handlebars, then just try tying the handlebars to the saddle stem with some string and make a video about it. Unicycles also balance in the same way even though they don't have handlebars because a single wheel will also drive in the direction it's leaning, just like rolling a coin on its edge. 
So my bike has the correct steering geometry, so the wheel will steer in the direction it leans and then the bike will head in that direction and it will catch itself and it won't fall over. However, I have a slightly different situation with the back wheel, which is that that also steers in the direction that it's leaning. So if I lean the bike right, the wheel steers right, and if I lean it left, it steers left. So that basically means that if I lean the bike to the left, both wheels steer to the left and we have parallel steering. And obviously that's the same on the right as well. I did previously build a bike which had two wheels steering, the back wheel with a servo that could either steer in the same or the opposite direction as the front wheel, and then, then we could have parallel steering to see if we could balance on it. After a few crashes I did actually manage to learn to ride it, and in the end it wasn't too bad, as long as the wheels don't go so parallel that they're both facing sideways, and then you'd end up with a hoverboard with no balancing mechanism. <laughs> The situation we've got now though is quite different because that caster can spin round 360 degrees completely out of control. If I push the bike in a straight line then the caster tends to trail, but as I stop then the back end tends to sort of overtake and spin round and it's very hard to stop. I fitted the electronics and two 6S LiPos in series to give us 50 volts, and I've added some colour because everyone knows it's really dangerous then. Obviously we've got that little twist grip thing for the throttle and we've got the brake with the electric cutoff, and everything's connected up. So first of all I thought I'd just walk it around slowly and try and get a grip on steering. So really you need to be able to steer in one direction and lean in the other direction so that the back wheel will follow the front wheel instead of steering in the same direction. It's actually very difficult to make it go where you want it to go and to stop that back end just swivelling round and round and round and round. And just when you think you've got the hang of it, you haven't at all, and there's absolutely nothing you can do to stop that back end just spinning round and round and round, completely out of control. Here's a clearer view from the back there, so you can see the parallel steering, but then if you try and steer the other way, the back just carries on going in that direction, and it's very, very difficult to stop it. So sometimes the wheels are facing parallel, which is what we really want, or at least what we expect, but then suddenly they reverse, and they're both facing kind of in opposite directions, so they go round in an arc. So it's going to be very difficult to work out what's happening at any particular time. So my electric wheel's powered up, so I thought I'd just put it on the ground, jump on it, and see if I can ride it. So in the end the best thing to do was just to go fast, I just hammered the throttle right down and there it went with that back caster trailing until I tried to slow down and then basically there's normally a crash where the back end spins out and you can't control it anymore. I actually managed to wrap the handlebars there and I broke that soft brake cable but we've still got physical brakes and I can kill the throttle so for now I don't care. <laughs> So that makes a lot of sense that if we just go fast and that caster gets pulled out then everything's fine, but what if I want to go slower and try and steer?
Well, that's not quite so easy. I did get the hang of it eventually, but it's very hard to go where you want to, so unfortunately my best turn, which is just here, went straight out of shot. But I did manage to make that corner and do it before I hit the fence. And then I did manage to make one other corner which I did catch in shot, which is right here. So I was pretty happy about that. But then when I tried to do another one, yep, it all went wrong because I was probably going too slowly. And then disaster struck. Well, the bikes basically snapped in half, and I actually initially thought it was that bend that I reinforced that had broken where I'm standing, but actually it wasn't, it was the other one that wasn't bent as tight and was right next to the plastic, even though the plastic's fine, the metal broke. So I tried reinforcing it with a piece of wood that I had in my shed at home, and putting another cross brace in, and then bolting that through the board and through that steel underneath. I only got a couple of goes on that though before it broke and basically it's just because of that hinge point right underneath the orange piece of plastic. There's not really any way of cross bracing it apart from tying it to the front forks or the front wheel or something. I think this is going to be the next big thing in bikes. I'm really happy that I could actually ride it. Obviously we need to do a complete rebuild now and build a new frame. So I'm going to come back and do a version 2 with some slightly different geometry and some other features.